We'll just get started. It's 8.01. My name is Brett Applin. Um, right now, I'm key leader direct to John Paul Vetter. And uh, those guys, those guys, meaning Chris Smithy, John Paul Vetter, Jeremiah Nolan, they got invited uh, for being AO and above, agency owner and above, paid by all the 110s in the hierarchy to go to Cabo. That's not bad. So those guys are enjoying that warm, balmy weather while we're sitting here uh, looking at ice on the street and, uh, and snow on the ground and things like that. But um, so, you know, they're missed, but I hope they're having a good time. They earned it. And, um, and then we're going to kind of talk a little bit today about uh, some other trips that you guys can get a, a be a part of too. So before we kind of jump in and, and dive into the topic today, which was going to be about, hey, let's talk about ZipRecruiter a little bit. You know, some of us are using it, some of us are not. I know people like Julia are using it, um, Spencer's using it, Jeremiah's using it, I'm using it. Um, we just had two agents come on and started using it just recently. And um, folks have been using it for a while. It's surprisingly easy to use. And I think for those that don't, um, you know, uh, you should take a peek at it. So I, that's all I want to do today. This is not really a training. This is really just, let's take a peek behind the curtain on kind of what I do. Um, I think uh, we're going to get into leaderboards here in a second, but to kind of tee this up, um, you know, if I look back at what I liked about last year, I liked what came out of my recruiting effort. I did. Um, so, you know, you could sit and look at numbers, but the reality is, you know, these are people, these are folks. And one of the things that we get to do on the sales side is we get to protect families. But something I'm even more passionate about is, is getting people out of the rat race, the corporate rat race. And um, I know my story was very uh, laden with troubles. You know, you get to a certain point in your career and I did very well. Um, but you run into things like, um, you know, management at some point will step in and say, hey, did you make a lot of money last year? Great. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to change the rules this year and make it even harder for you to make the same money, right? Uh, that's happened to me more times than I care to count. I call that moving the goalpost, and they've done it to me quite a bit. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you're with a company for, gosh, 13 years even, and then um, they get new leadership, somebody who wants to be leader of sales for a big $4 billion corporation, and they're trying to create value. So what do they do? They come up with these wacky ideas that don't even incorporate you know, those who do the job on a regular basis and, and they overspend and make bad decisions and people get laid off. And I did, I got laid off. Um, and here's the worst part. Um, this story is not unique. Um, as a matter of fact, um, they begged me, senior vice presidents had begged me to come back and I did. And two years later, they got a president and he made bad decisions and they had to lay me off again. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. So my story is not very unique. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there who are going through this. And what you're going to find as we begin to talk about this, I'll dive into leaderboards again in just a second, is that there's a lot of talented people who are wonderful that are out there. And so kind of back into my first statement, uh, ZipRecruiter helps me connect with those people. These are people that want to come work for you. These are people that want an opportunity to go do things for themselves where the rug can never be pulled out, right? Uh, they can make as much money as they want um, and, and they can start to build a future so they don't have to go and start over every time some new leader in management wants to change things up. Okay, so so I'd like to show you that today. But before I do, um, I do kind of want to get into some leaderboards real quick. I do want to give kind of a precursor statement to all of our newer agents out there who have signed some really fun and new deals until they go uh, into ops and are through agency approved, and you filled out the insurance bay for that new application. It's not gonna show up on this week's leaderboard. It will though, however, next week. So just, if, you, if I call out some names and you don't see your name on there because you just recently wrote some stuff, the only reason why yours is not showing up here right now is because you gotta fill out the insurance bay and then they gotta um, go ahead and forge your app. That That's the trigger point for you to show up on the leaderboard with some of these newer apps. So, all right, so let's move on. Let's get into it, right? Uh, let's take a peek at the top 10 sales for last week. Uh, we had John Gilliam with three apps for 1761. Uh, we had James McKeon. Oh, pardon me. John Gilliam is uh, directed John Paul Vetter. 
James McKeon wrote six applications for 1894, directed John Paul Vetter, right? Um, I'm going to skip myself out of this thing. Uh, James Gerling, two apps, 3626, directed Jeremiah Nolan. Um, Stella Dinwiddie, number six, eight applications for four, 4698. Um, and then we have uh, number five, Terry, by the way, Stella is direct to Chris Manthe. Number five is Terry Myers, three applications for 5182. And then we got Donna Bates, number four, four applications. Um, 5524, direct to Spencer. Number three, Jeremiah Nolan on the trip right now. Eight applications for 5752, direct to Chris. Uh, number two is John Paul Vetter, five applications for 6417, direct to Chris. And number one, Spencer Cushion, six apps, 7574, direct to Chris for the week. That's a, that's a solid effort. I know January is always kind of an interesting month, trying to get back to it and get pipeline going, people getting, uh, getting moving. So anyway, welcome back. And um, so I am going to um, ask that everybody mute themselves for the moment. How we're going to do this is, again, this is not meant to be a training. This is just meant to be come hang with me with your cup of coffee. I kind of want to show you some things on the screen, and, and then we're going to get after it. Shortly after I do some of this stuff, I'm going to do less talking and I'm going to open it up to the, to the group and kind of just ask me some questions. Um, some things that I've kind of, uh, what I like about this, what I've run into, like my style of system. Um, and then you guys can kind of go for it from there. Is that fair? So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to come down here and share my screen. Let's see if we can, we can do this here. Let's go for it. And, and I'm going to maximize this real quick. So, hey, this is ZipRecruiter. This is a web-based program, quickly. Um, and I'm going to move some of the folks out of the way here. Um, this is a web-based program that I can, I can get onto with any computer at any, in any place. And what you're going to see here on this is a, is a list of functionality on the left-hand side here, um, where you can post a job. It tells us how many within the, uh, the group, how many slots are open. Um, right, how many I actually have and, and, and whatnot. That's all this is. This, by the way, this, this whole conglomerate of the ability to have ZipRecruiter is run by Scott Mank, who's above Chris Minifee, right? He has 350 slots uh, that he buys for us at a discount. Each one of the ads that we're going to talk about today costs $17 a month. They're not a big deal, okay? Uh, if you tried to go do this on your own, um, this would easily cost you north of $60 an ad. Easy, right? Um, so it is, it's kind of neat to be able to be part of a group where I can get in and get out as often as I want to and, and, and kind of go pick what I need. So, so this is just the basics. I do want to show you the jobs that I have. I do want to show you how easy this is. I want to show you what's in the job and how and what I can do with it. So, so these are my jobs. I can click on my jobs. These are things that I created, right? Um, it, and it does things like it shows me this job's here in Austin, Texas. Um, I've had this post active for 10 days. I've had 68 visitors and I've had 11 candidates, right? Um, pretty cool if I'm looking to see the performance of how these are doing in the last 10 days. Um, I can go down and see What's not performing? It's only been around for 10 days. I only refresh these same ads every 30 days. They got to be out there and live out there for a good, you know, in my opinion, a good 30 days before you refresh them to the top. And the point of refreshing is just like anything, you know, in within ZipRecruiter, my ad will go to the top uh, every time I refresh it, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive into an ad. Let's take a look. What can you do within each ad? Um, when I go to create a new ad, I don't have to sit and type a bunch of new stuff every time I create an ad. I simply go down here, right, and I duplicate the job. I click it. When I click that, it's going to go ahead and duplicate the job and I hit save, everything in there. All I have to do is modify the location of where I want. So I don't have to type a bunch of new stuff, and it's very quick and easy. Um, and then I go to the prior job up here and I'll do the same thing, manage and close that one, right? 
So, so that allows me to archive a job that I closed and not get rid of it forever because there's candidates in there that did apply to that one. My, my goal of refreshing uh, is to duplicate the job, get it to the top and the one that was kind of stagnant. It's, uh, you know, over 28 days. Um, it, it'll still keep the candidates for me to go back later. And I'll tell you why you might want to do something like that. So that's the job. Let's click into one. Right. So let's take a look at, uh, editing the job. Like, like, let's just take a look at the job. This is the kind of the format on the back end, guys, when you're taking a look at this. Um, I keep the same tagline. You can do what you want to do. But this is where I would change the field. I'd come in here and I could pick anywhere in the United States and start changing my ad to different locations. Uh, the information in here for job description, this is very boilerplate. Um, I did not create this. This comes from Symmetry. Um, it's all right in there. The only thing I changed when I, when I came in here was, um, you know, some of my information to get a hold of me. Um, and so, so there is that, um, I can put in the, uh, the range of compensation. Um, I can even go in here and put in keyword search for the kinds of people that have a background in this that I would love for them to pull. Right. So this is good. Um, uh, I'm the hiring company, obviously. There's taglines that go out. There's quick little blurbs of descriptions. So when people are scanning in ZipRecruiter, they can see that. But as you can see, these are all the people who currently are getting a part of uh, Scott Mink's group that, uh, that go and recruit right now. And they use this block of ads, right? Um, so you can do quite a bit with this. And this is not a training. This is just kind of like, can I show you what's going on here? I've even added some screening questions, right? Uh, why? Because I don't want to talk to just anybody. I, I want to filter it just enough, not too much, but I want to filter it just enough that I don't get somebody from India trying to apply. And trust me, they will, right? Um, so things like, do you have a do you have a license, life and health, yes or no? Uh, we require that you watch the video links before an interview. Did you watch them? Um, are you authorized to work in the U.S.? Pretty big one right there. Because uh, ZipRecruiter is the web, and you're going to get everybody under the sun um, sometimes trying to apply. So this filters out quite a bit. And then, hey, if you don't have an active life and health license, are you open to getting one with our assistance, right? This is just kind of gives me a quick cursory. And, and why, why do I want to know that? Um, because I'm going to go now to candidates. And this is exactly what it looks like when you wake up in the morning, you get your coffee. This is what shows up in your inbox. A bunch of candidates, a bunch, right? So, so let me kind of share what it is and what you can do. I can quickly cursor over this gentleman's name and it pops up his resume, right? Uh, why is that important to me? Um, for a couple of reasons. I kind of want to look at uh, who are you? Right? Are you 16 years old? Just did a cashier job at Dick's Sporting Goods, or are you, um, you know, what's your background? I want to know. Hey, check this out. I see mortgage. I see service. I see sales. Pretty cool. I'll dig a little deeper. Director of Sales and Operations. Is he currently working? I want to. I want to see that. Are you currently working? Right. So sometimes there's a trigger to bid that uh, kind of shows uh, this person's on the market. Right. Um, I'm really interested when people apply in their current, they still have a job. Uh, that means that they're in control of their own life a little bit. And it's not just, hey, I need to come out here because I need to make a quick buck because I'm out of work, right? Um, which either of them is fine, but it helps you start a dialogue. That's all. Um, so that's cool. I'll even run down here, take a peek at some of this stuff. And look at that, call center sales, VP of a bank. Um, Hey, that's cool. I'll even look down here to see if there's any um, any background with insurance or an insurance license. Um, and then this is what I will do. It's this simple. I'm going to click on a box. I'm going to say email this guy, right? I'm going to get a drop down template of responses. And these, by the way, are the library of all the things that everybody who has ZipRecruiter ads, they, they use. It's all in one library. You can create your own too, or you can 
copy mine or somebody else, it doesn't matter. But I'll go down here to mine, the Applin Agency interview request, go to the bottom, <clears throat> it's in. It's done. It's that simple. You just, and I'll go back to candidates to show you this. You just contacted Dennis McCool. Sweet. What else do I do? What if, what if I'm a little concerned that my uh, rate of return is not, people aren't getting back to me? Well, it is an email, right? And emails, people don't always read their emails. Sometimes stuff is funny. It goes into spam. It just does. Sometimes it does, right? So what do I do about that? What, and I'll tell you, one of the things I did this last year that really ramped up getting people to respond to me is the fact that I sent a text too, right, to this person. We have received your interest in Symmetry Financial Group via ZipRecruiter Day. I'm reaching out to schedule an interview by phone. Give me a few options, time zone, and best number to reach out. In addition, we just emailed you, emailed you the interview request with more details. Please see the embedded videos that will make for a great day dialogue. We look forward to speaking with you, right? That's it. I do those two together. I send the email and I do that. And the rate of response is great. It is great. Okay. Um, what do I do from there? Um, I'm a, it's as easy as somebody's responded to me and I said, great. And I now have them set up for a call. What does that look like? It looks like this. I've got one right after this call today. Um, I just put in my calendar symmetry conversation with this person, uh, Brett, to call his number and schedule it for 99.30 and send them a calendar invite. That's it. I set them for 30 minute calls. And uh, I can tell you quickly, the way I structure my calls with people is I say, listen, this is informal in nature. I'm glad, I hope this time still works for us. Um, we're gonna treat it this way. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself quickly who I am, how long I've been with Symmetry, and my background, just a tad, why I'm here, right? And then I'd like to give the floor to you, and I'd like to learn a little bit more about how you and I got a chance to meet. Uh, we don't need to go through your resume, I have that right now, um, but I do wanna hear what's going on in your world that uh, gets us this conversation today, right? And then lastly, just by chance, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, lay out the opportunity in a way that's a little more meaningful to what you said. How's that sound, right? And we just have a dialogue. Um, I do ask in the beginning, have you watched the videos? Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, beat somebody up for not watching the videos, but it does kind of help me understand somebody's a little more ingrained in this opportunity than somebody else. Somebody who has not watched the videos, um, you know, I have to share the opportunity in a way that's a little more brand new, uh, compared to others who had a chance to watch videos and they're in like they watch videos, they're vested. Let's, let's get going here. But the key to any interview in a 30 minute window is understanding their why. I think early on when I started recruiting, man, anybody who wants to jump on board, let's do it. Right. Anybody who gave me the time of day, let's do it. Um, I've learned now that that's not, uh, that's not the best way to run these. It's okay. And I, and I kind of want to share this just from my vantage point, you guys can do what you want to do, but, um, it's really exciting to be on a leaderboard. Somebody put my name in lights and said, I did a lot of something. The reality is you're running a business. And in the real world, nobody runs a leaderboard. Nobody cares, right? Um, what is important is activity, for sure. Um, I always wish we could manage that and measure that more than actual outcome. But you, you want the right people on your team. You got to think about it. These are people you want to partner with. These are people that you would work with, not somebody who, you know, um, you got to push them along or beg to join the opportunity. The opportunity sells itself. When I started treating this like this is an elite opportunity because it is, um, then I start putting myself in the shoes of saying, so, so there you go. There's the opportunity in a matter of speaking. Why should I hire you? Why should I hire you? Tell me more. How, how do I get to that? Tell me, tell me why you want this opportunity versus going and getting a job just like you just had. Why? You know, I only spend time with five new agents at one point in time. Why do you consider yourself one of the five? Right? I've only got 24 hours in a day. Why would I spend time? You know, tell me more. Like, I want to hear, Scott Mank likes to call it the why that make. find out the why that makes you cry. Right? What is that powerful, moving, compelling event that would do something like that? Right? 
Um, for some people, it's just we're kicking tires and I don't know. And, you know, but but you really want to kind of take the time to get to know people a little bit. And then what can you do to make them prove who they appear to be? Um, there's there's a process afterwards. Lori's very involved in the onboarding process. And there's a few steps to that. And I'm just going to tell you what those are right now. Um, so when we get somebody off the phone who's like, let's do this, man, I want to get started. Uh, then we have a little, little mini questionnaire that you can cut and paste into an email. And, um, you know, at that point, um, it goes straight to Lori. It's just a little, just a little filter that says, are you a decent candidate to even have an insurance license? It's very quick for them to fill out. And I tell them it's coming, fill it out, but text me back that you've done so, right? Uh, so Lori will get the, the response to that. Uh, they'll text me back and show me, hey, I can, you know, I can reciprocate quickly. Then I say, great, I'm gonna go ahead and get you on GroupMe. And this is our team texting app and people are gonna wanna welcome you to the team. I wanna see you interact with the team. So let's see if they do that, right? Uh, during that time, uh, Lori has sent this pre-licensing kit to them with the, con with the calendar schedule. And I'm going to walk them through how to go get their pre-licensing kit, right? Um, then Lori will be able to tell us or me, hey, they went ahead and actually bought that. Okay, great. Now that they've done all those things, then I'll go ahead and send Symmetry's new uh, onboarding portal that you can manage. I actually want to show you that today. Um, and it's an invite for them to fill it all out. This is everything every one of you did, um, like answer questions, uh, show us a proof of your pre-licensing. Do you have an anti-money laundering certificate? If you don't, go ahead and click here and take the course um, and avoid a check. We got to set you up on direct deposit. That pack is what goes to your agency owner to approve, which goes to corporate and sets up their business. It's the same information in pack that gets shipped out to all the carriers when it's time to do insurance bay and go ahead and do those things. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. But the point of sharing all this with you guys is to show you recruiting and onboarding is not complicated. It's not. Okay. Now we've got enough tools and process that you guys uh, can pretty much do this. And when do I do this, by the way? Um, you know those hours in the morning from 8 to 11 when insurance just really isn't doing much, right? We're not really calling people and waking them up. Some people do. I don't. Um, I like to use from like, you know, 8 to 11 where I, I put it in my schedule where that's when I'm having conversations. So, so this, by the way, is the onboarding portal that Symmetry has created for all of us. Um, you'll have your own when you decide you want to start recruiting. I like this. This is a nice tool. I can go over here and I can send an invitation, right? Um, and when I send an invitation to somebody after I get off the phone, it's pretty basic. The only information I really need is their, um, their email address, their phone number, their name. And that's pretty much it. This thing kind of stalled out on me. So let me see if it'll go through here. Um, When I send them out, I can go track my invitations, right? This shows I sent this to them. They haven't done anything with it. This one went in there and did, you know, something. They registered. They're, they're somewhere in process. Applied means that they are, they've fully gone through the process. That's, that's just tracking my invitations. And then I can go out and track applications. Um, if the single fire up, kind of slow this morning. And I can take a look at pending contract signature, pending licensing completion, onboarding complete, right? We kind of get a feel for where everybody's at in this portal. It doesn't take very long before, you know, you start having uh, a nice list of people in the pipeline that you're getting ready to, to take care of. And I think some people um, along the way would say, uh, no, this, this concept of training people scares me, right? This concept of bringing people on concerns me. But let me tell you why I think it's a, it, you don't need to be concerned and there's a process for that. 
And let me let me tell you why this is a good idea for those who are hearing this for the first time. Um, you know, we've got people on the team. Uh, Julie is one of them, right? You start growing people, and it starts bringing you up through the ranks. I've learned some of that too. I'm kind of going through that too. Um, but over time, as the people underneath you sell, it counts towards your number. Everything. So let's play this out. Let's say Lori was a brand new agent of mine, and let's say Julia was was also. And these two ladies, they get trained out in stage one, and they go set some appointments, and they go get some thing on the board. It's not uncommon to see, you know, Lori and Julia go out in their first week and go sell some good business. Well, let's say Lori sold three grand, right? And Julia sold three grand um, and you sold three grand. What did you sell for the week? You sold nine grand. You did. It counts towards your contract level, right? Uh, This is important because I think, you know, in in a lot of ways we've, you know, for a lot of us who started last year, you know, you fight hard to, to get your number on the board. There's only so much time in the day you got, I'm trying to get good at sales. I'm, I'm trying to be effective and consistent because that's a challenge all the time too. But along the way, if I've invested in people in a time in the morning when I don't really use that time for much anyway, um, it, it can become pretty meaningful. And so how meaningful can it be right now? I've got 27, uh, 25 people in process. Uh, that's a lot of people, right? You might say, I don't want 27. They're not, they're not all in the same place, right? Um, on the call today, we've got some of my newer agents that they just started or selling some business. You got some people who are studying for their license. You've got some that, you know, they've been able to hear a little bit longer, so they don't need as much of my attention. But uh, this is a powerful way to grow your business pretty quick. And, and here's the funny thing. I might have 25 or John Paul might have, whatever he has and Chris and and what have you, you don't need a lot of people to be successful in this business and start growing a team. You don't, you need two people to write an app, one app, right? Two months in a row and you, and you're a team leader. That's it. That's it. There's no monetary value that they ask. doesn't even have to be the same two people. Um, it takes three people two months in a row, uh, with 30,000, you and those three others, 30,000 for two months in a row, you're a key leader, right? Um, the next step up is agency owner. It's just doing what you've already done, giving yourself enough time, and you're an agency owner. I've seen people do this in a variety of ways. Some people are rock stars, and they go sell 40 grand, and and then, you know, there are other agents, they sell a small amount, and they hit agency owner. I've seen agency owners that uh, the other extreme side, they don't sell at all. I don't recommend that. That's not a good recommendation. Um, but all they do is recruit and build an agency that way, right? It'll take you forever to do that. But I've seen I've seen folks do that. And um, then there's somewhere in between. So what's the in between? I think uh, I do want to kind of the reason why I wanted to bring up ZipRecruiter today and kind of talk about this is Scott Manks going to start having call, and it's uh, completely voluntary for those that want to get on a diet of recruiting and building their agency. Right. And um, before that happens, obviously, you get to learn what tools we use and kind of the process we do. Uh, that's that's it. It's really simple. So um, 2020 came with uh, the opportunity for goals. Right. And I don't know what your goals are. Um, I know what mine are. Um, I looked at my result last year and I was OK. I was pretty happy with the recruiting side. Um, I think I'd be a lot happier with the sales side to, uh, I want to double that number that that needs to happen. But along the way, there's, there's multiple ways to pull this off, right? Like, um, do I want to go out and be Mr. Inter- individual contributor and wear myself out? Or do I want the team to kind of help too? I, I want to balance. And so what people say here to be successful in this marathon called building your agency, which is very doable, um, is we're trying to have 2020 vision vision. That's something that was, you know, coined last year where I I'm trying to write five grand a week or 20 grand a month. Right. And I'm trying to get 20 applicants, uh, applicant packs back in a month. So five a week kind of thing or double digit. That's a good diet. That's a good goal to strive for every week. Do I always hit it? Nope. Nope. I've gone through times where all I do is I hunker down for two months and I recruit like wildfire. And then I get back to sales and try and get some balance. But 
Um, but everybody does it a little differently. I happen to, after I've tried everything the wrong way at least five times, that's me, I've done that. Um, 2020, you're trying to have balance in sales and recruiting is where it's at. Your personal production always takes precedence over recruiting. Why? Because if I'm at a contract rate of 80%, I'm going to get 80% of something as opposed to the override percentage of what a person brings in. So I have to balance my time with the people I bring on too. Um, and it is possible to do that. It's not, it's not terribly difficult, but um, I hope that helps. Um, I kind of want to take, if you guys have questions, I'd like you to come off of mute. Um, I didn't want this to be an infomercial. Um, I want this to be kind of like a two way street dialogue because this is about people are curious, right? What, uh, why would I want to recruit? How easy is it? What's it cost? How do you do it? Um, what's the process after that? That's what I hope to uh, accomplish this morning. But enough of me talking, come off of mute and ask some questions. Anybody? Anybody have any questions about recruiting in general? Zip recruiter? Um, any of that stuff? I, I might have to, uh, I might have to bring you guys around here. I'm wondering. Hey, Brad. Yeah. I'll be the first. Um, when you decide that you want to start recruiting, you had mentioned that Scott has like 360 spots on ZipRecruiter. Um, yeah. What is the process? Where do you begin? I mean, obviously you have to tell your mentor, but. Yeah, you start with your mentor and say, hey, listen, I'm interested in getting started. Um, what he'll, what he or she will probably do is talk to you about what do you want to accomplish? And so that the way that conversation kind of looked for me and John Paul was, you know, I was three months into the business and he says, you know, start small, right? Get yourself five or 10 ads and, and get used to it first. And I'll kind of coach you through that and kind of how to be effective at it first. Once you become effective at the, how to use a tool and how to plan your time and what to say on the phone and the process and all, then you can go ahead and ramp it up. Right. So I would get with your upline about that to say, hey, listen, we had a call today about ZipRecruiter. I'm in. That's what I want to do. And before you go run and go get, and this is just me in general, before you go run and get new tools for your business, I'm always a big fan of don't buy it unless it was part of your plan. So as you know, there's a lot of things out there that, that, that get thrown at us, right? I've seen everything from from you know outside lead sources to prepackaged food for agents. I mean, you, you can go crazy with this stuff. So make sure it's part of your plan for 2020, right? If, if there's a concrete plan, then it's time to get going. And uh, like, if you want to hit a certain level by a certain time, talk with your upline about the right amount of ads to do that. And they'll go ahead and support that. What they'll do from there is if all the ads are already taken, uh, Scott Mate needs to buy additional ads in blocks of 50. So we will pull together between the entire hierarchy and make sure that we've got enough to get an extra 50 on the plate. So it's that simple. It can be a 24 hour turnaround. They give you a login to zip recruiter and you can go in and start placing your ads. That's a good question. Anybody else? Stella had one, but her microphone's not working. Oh, uh oh, we, we yeah, it's, Stella's asking, Brett, this is Julia. Um, did, did you say it's $17 a month if we go through Scott's Zip Recruiter ad? Yes, ma'am. $17 a month if we go through Scott's uh, block. And that's for, that's for one job or yes, one posting. That's one posting. So if I want 10 ads, I'm spending 170 a month, right? Right now I'm running 10. I usually ran 20 all year last year and it was, uh, it was busy, but um, it was important that I did that. I needed to get a pipeline of people. I've, back, I've since backed it down to 10. And so that's what's cool about Scott's ad, right? Like um, as my business is moving or doing something, I can, I can expand or shrink as much as I want to. Like right now, I've gone through like a two-month cycle of really pushing hard because I'm going to be making a run for agency owner here pretty soon. I need the right players on, in, you know, on the team. And then I'm going to go back to work and start selling and that the, the both of us together are going to hit that number now. Right. Um, but, uh, but back to it, 
if five ads are getting you, you know, 20 new people coming in a month, great. If it requires 10, do 10. But I, I typically see, and Julie, I kind of asked for your input on this too, is, you know, uh, for me in the beginning, it's just like leads, right? Um, I need more leads because I'm new on the phone. I need more time doing this because I'm new at it. So, so now am I getting about the same response with 10? Uh, not as much as 20, but I don't need 20 right now. I just don't. Julie, what do you think about that? Um, you know, Brett, I have to agree with you. You know, it's no different in my experience and then hearing Chris talk and in with us talking and then even talking with Scott about my building. It's a matter of you're just sorting through people and you're going to find that you're going to be sorting through a lot of people just like we do with our leads for right. protection or final expense or DFL. And the reality is, is you're going to find that you may talk to 60 people in a week to send out 20 packets, <laughs> quite honestly, because you have to figure out too what it is that you're looking for and what you're willing to work with or wanting to work with and, and cultivate and develop in a partnership, a business relationship with the folks that you're looking at bringing on into your own agency to be. Right. And out of those, let's say 20 packets, you might only get 10 back mm -hmm. for that week at least. I mean, and you have stragglers that, you know, you reconnect with six months, seven months down the road. And Scott loves to tell that one story about how when he's interviewed someone, he sent a packet out and it, over a year later, they call him up out of the blue and he's like, who are you? <laughs> and then they reconnect and then they jump on board and, and it's all about timing for our new agents that we're looking at bringing on. Just it, like it's all about timing for the, the folks that are looking for mortgage protection. That's it. It is. And if you guys are curious, if you've never done any kind of recruiting in your past and in the business world, uh, it looks no different here. Uh, there is one difference. Um, so when I ran half the side of the country for CentOS, right? So I'm the sales director for that organization at the time, and I'm hiring for a particular kind of sales manager. Well, that's a W-2 job. That comes with a certain level of pay, right? And so you get the caliber of people that come in, and you might have people that have done all this filtering for you. You didn't have to find them. Somebody else did the heavy lifting to get, you know, five qualified candidates to come sit with you. And the interview process looks very much the same. Um, and, and by the way, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways to get successful candidates to start asking behavioral style questions. If you ask things that are yes or no questions, you're going to get what you asked. Yes or no. Right. Um, but you're not gonna get a demonstration of who they really are. Um, so asking behavioral style questions is key. Um, and then I think also uh, making them demonstrate that, uh, you know, you're not, you're not uh, putting on a show. They have to demonstrate that they've got skin in the game and they want. You said something, show me that that's exactly what you mean. You know, I, I know over time, I'll tell people what the opportunity is, and then I'll tell them, here's who doesn't work here. Here's who doesn't work. Here is who does not work well here. Um, I talk about the activity. I talk about 1099. I talk about um, consistency and schedule, right? Um, I want them to hear it. I want them to hear. We're gonna, the most popular time for people to make dials is Friday up until 8 p.m. and Saturday from 9 to 1. I, I can't tell you how many records have scratched because the golf games have been considered. Wait, what? My Friday night, my Saturday morning? Oh, no. That's not going to work. Excellent. I'd rather know that now than and as I bring people on later. And it's like, what are you talking about? Right? What's this all about? Oh, you have to pay for leads? Um, sir, you have been through the entire process, and we have talked about this, and it's been documented along. You mean you got to pay for leads? Yeah, well, you don't. 
Um, so, so you have to kind of just like with sales, it's a numbers game and, and not to be silly about it, but, uh, this is an effective tool. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people bring people on and, and you see them on group me. Not all those people are fully through the process. All they are when you see them show up on group me is they filled out a, a mini questionnaire. Uh, we got them on group me and now they're starting to practice for their test. So if you ever wonder if you're a new agent and you're like, why all of a sudden does Brett flush 16 people out? right? Or why is Jeremiah or John Paul? It's because these people never even showed up to their own party. Do you want, you want to know what that is? That's everybody who told me a lie is what that is. Because nobody comes in here without answering my questions and, the, and your questions. Those are people on average, if you want to know the average person who the, the integrity meter is kind of low, those are the ones who get ditched on group me. That's it. So not to belabor. Good stuff. Thanks, Julia. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Who's this? Oh, it's Greg Shapiro. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Hi, Greg. Hey. So between uh, Brett and Julia, uh, Julia, you touched on some of your thoughts on, on the metrics. I know that we're awash in production and metrics as far as dials and, you know, dials to contacts, contacts to meetings and how many you'll sit and how many you'll write. I've never really heard any corporate stance on the metrics for recruiting. It, do you guys have a sense? I know I, I've heard like 20 is the goal, but what do you have to do to get to 20? Yeah. How many of the 20 actually, you know, stick around long enough to write some business and how many are there a year later? It, yeah. do, do we have that as a corporation or no? Yeah, well, we have that as a, uh, from experience. And so I actually have this dialogue and Julia can, uh, can call me out on this if I'm off. Um, <laughs> I had this, no, but I, I had this dialogue with Chris about halfway through my year and I was a little like, hey, I am like, I'm going for it, you know? And, and so I heard a statement a while ago and then I'll answer your question. Um, and, and that was, you know, at first we dip our toe into recruiting and then we actually learn how to recruit. And once we learn how to recruit, then we're dipping our toe into training. And then we actually learn how to train. <laughs> and then we dip our toe into leadership and then we learn how to lead. It's a process. But uh, what Chris told me, and I felt a little disenfranchised in the beginning, and I hope you don't, um, uh, you know, the leads you pay for to dial they have a much better rate of response than people do. Uh, this is a volunteer army. And anytime these people can get up, you and me too, we can get up and we can go do something else. It's just a volunteer army. So Chris would tell you, right, um, you know, out of 10 people you talk to, uh, you know, that maybe one, one will probably work out, right? Uh, so it's a one in 10 kind of scenario. I'm not going to say you have to talk to 100 people to get 10 applicant packs in. That's not true. Um, when I first started my, my, you know, it was okay. It was probably like half now, um, just by way of filtering, I'm, I'm eight to nine out of 10 of people I talk to, I can bring on board to get started and get moving forward. The challenge becomes these are unknown people, right? They'll tell you anything you want to hear. They're professional interviewers. They're, I don't know, whatever, you know, but, but really what Chris would tell you is, um, one out of 10 of these folks are going to stick long-term, right? So if you take a look at Chris's four year, I think it's four years, I could be off. Um, you know, he pulls a rock star, a major rock star in once a year. Does he get a bunch of folks that still write business? Sure. But he gets one that really catches the bug, catches the vision, starts recruiting, starts really getting after it in a meaningful way, right? And if he were to line out who those people are, they're no mystery to you. You see them on the leaderboard all the time. But he got one a year, right? Um, Julia's one of them. Spencer's one of them. Um, John Paul's one of them. Jeremiah's one of them. Right? Bella. <laughs> huh? You know? And, 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 but did they bring in a whole bunch of other people that wrote some business and, and whatever? Uh, yeah. Yep. A lot. A lot of people. Um, but why do we call these people out? It's because they got the bug and they wanted to build an agency and they're doing it, right? Um, so I don't want to... Um, miss out on others that are on this call. Anybody who's on this call right now, you're one of the 10%. That's what you are. And the reason why I'm sharing ZipRecruiter with you is you're going to be one of the top 5% if you start building an agency. Um, you, you'll live a little bit longer. Um, 
you know, life is in such a roller coaster. Um, and you'd be surprised. So I want to share something with everybody. We'll end the call after, after questions. Anybody ever heard of Lee Jed Lika? You hear of a guy named Lee Jed Lika on the leaderboards? He started this time last year, maybe a little before. Now I want to share something with y'all. Lee Jed Lika just made agency owner. Cool. I'm happy for him. Uh, I'm friends with him. He's a good guy. Super effective guy, right? This guy went out and wrote 631, 660,000 on his own pen last year, on his own pen. That means this dude was running on average 50 grand a month in production. That's insane, right? Like there's something special here. Um, not only that, he recruited a high, how much was it? 154 people last year. Man, that, that guy, he's taking vitamins or something. I don't know what's going on in that, in that protein drink in the morning, but he's effective. Now I want to share some with you. Imagine for a second, you are at 80% contract level. Um, and, and, um, and I'll get the screen back here on me in a second here. Um, imagine, uh, I don't know how to stop share. Anyway, I'm just going to finish this out. Sorry. Um, imagine for a second, you're at 80% contract level. You got a 20% spread on this guy and him and his team write a hundred grand a month, which he does. You're making $20,000 a month on that one individual's effort. Okay. 20,000 a month on that one individual, not because you did something special. You just found him. That's it. You don't know. So for all the things we look at and the ratios of what doesn't, you know, the work you have to get to, but I promise you the person who did bring him in has a higher than 20% spread on him. Right. I think it's more like a 30% spread. So this person on one alone is making $30,000 on one recruit a month. Why am I telling you that same reason Julie and I, continue to recruit. You don't know who it is. Just like with mortgage protection, you got to go turn over rocks. You don't know, you don't know. So, so getting into the recruiting game is important. I can tell you, I've had bad days in the sales field. And then all of a sudden I got two of my agents call up, Brett, I just got this and I just got that. Well, that really lifts my spirits because we're a team together. Right. Um, and, and so the point isn't just, Hey, here's a cool tool for 17 bucks a month. It's to start your journey. You're going to be in the, you know, starting your mornings, however you do anyway. There's not a lot of insurance sold. Why not invest in your team, right? Why not start out and get a couple ads and get going? You know, that was the question that was posed to people like Jeremiah and John Paul and Chris. And right now they're sitting in Cabo paid by the 110s to take their spouse and go have a nice trip. Why? Because they took a chance. They took a chance in their mornings to do something different. And I hope you will too. And that's kind of the call for today. Um, I am going to leave it open for one, for a couple more questions and we're out of here. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? All right, you guys, great job. And uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me have an hour of your time. And thank you, um, Julia, for helping out as well. And uh, we'll go ahead and end here and look, uh, look for everybody's safe return. Have a great weekend, everybody.